In this video, we're gonna do a quick little math tutorial slash practice that's gonna help you prepare for physics. On the screen, we have six different formulas, four of which where you're gonna be solving for an exact number value, and two of them, you're gonna be solving for them in terms of the other variables. So obviously these last two over here, the one in purple and brown, you're gonna solve for alpha in terms of all the other variables, and then you're gonna solve for M2 in terms of all the other variables as well. So if you first wanna give all six of these problems a try, I would go ahead and pause the video right now and give them a try. And if you just wanna see me work through the problems now or you're ready to see the solutions, we're gonna go ahead and get started and work our way through the solutions. Now, as you're taking a look at these problems and you're just beginning a physics class or about to begin a physics class, you wanna make sure your algebra skills are pretty strong to make sure that you're able to accurately solve for each of your number solutions after you've read through some information and some background. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this one in gray over here. Keep in mind that you may not know all of these units, formulas, or what they pertain to, but it actually doesn't matter because we're basically just moving numbers around and trying to isolate a variable. So taking a look at this first gray setup here, we have 100 meters per second equals delta x over five. And all we need to do is isolate that delta x by getting rid of the five and we're dividing by five. So we're gonna do the opposite operation on both sides, which would be multiplying both sides by five. So you always wanna make sure to keep the entire setup equal that you do the same thing to both sides. That's gonna cancel out your five on the right side and then we're gonna have 100 times five on the left, which would leave us with an answer of 500 meters. Now, one trick that I like to use is cross multiplying, and you're gonna see me use this on the next one as well. So when you cross multiply, you can always move one or both numbers, whichever one is gonna be more beneficial to you. So if we just took this five and crossed it up and over to the left side, that would already complete our problem and we'd still be doing five times 100 and then we'd get the same answer. Now for our second one, we have something that is slightly more complicated um, we're gonna do 10 minus four first, and we're gonna always try to condense the look of our problem if we can. So if there's any kind of adding or subtracting or multiplying or any sort of simple operation you can do without scooting numbers around, I would definitely do that to clean up the look of the problem. Now from there, it actually looks quite similar to the other one. So you can look at it one of two ways. You can look at it like cross multiplying the t and the two. Okay, you don't necessarily have to put the two over the one, but you can, but the t will flip up and the two will drop down there and then you're basically done with the problem. Okay, so let me go ahead and work out it the more work it out the more formal way. And that would be like this. Multiplying both sides by t, just like we did with the five over there. And that would leave us with two times t and that would have our t's drop out, which would be 2t equals six. From there, again, we wanna isolate the t. If you have two numbers next to each other, they're always multiplied, so the opposite operation would be dividing both sides, and then that would cancel out our two, and then we get t equals three. It's three seconds. We're not gonna concentrate on the units too much because we're just focusing on the algebra portion of it. Okay, so like I said, there's two approaches. Um, there's the approach that's the more step-by-step -step formal method, which is multiplying both sides by t. Remember, it doesn't have to be a number, could be a variable that you're using to multiply or divide or whatever on each side to do some canceling. And then once I did that, it crossed out this t on the right side and flipped it over to here. And then we have two t equals six, okay? Or again, you could have just cross multiplied those. If you like that method, it is quick and easy. The two would drop down to the denominator and the t would flip up to the top. So anytime you're cross multiplying, as long as you take it across from one side of the equal sign to the other and going from numerator to denominator or vice versa, then you're able to do that without doing each of the steps individually. All right, let's go to our third one. So our third one, we're gonna go ahead and clean the look up, uh, clean up the look of this problem as we did the other one. So two times five is gonna be 10. And then for this one, we have three numbers. A two squared is gonna be four. So I can go ahead and put a four here. 
And keep in mind, it doesn't matter the order in which we multiply numbers. So if we did 1 half times a times 4, or did 4 times 1 half times a, it doesn't matter, we'll still get the same number value. So I'm going to combine my 4 and my 1 half. So 4 times 1 half is 2. So then we have 2a equals 10, or excuse me, plus 10 equals 40. And then we always want to make sure um, we take care of the numbers that aren't right next to the variable first. So we're going to go ahead and scoot the 10 over. We're adding. So we're going to do the opposite operation by subtracting. And that would leave us with 30 equals 2a. And since there's 2 times a, again, with the opposite operation, we're going to divide both sides by 2. And then we're going to get a equals 15. Okay, the unit is meters per second squared, which isn't that relevant right now. But once you get deeper into physics, you'll be, get more accustomed to the units. All right, there's our first three. So we're going to go ahead and erase those and slide up our bottom three. All right, now for this one in green, we have an energy formula here. 80 joules equals 1 half 3v squared. Again, we want to condense things if we can. So 1 half times 3 is just 1 and a half or 1.5. And then that's still multiplied by the v squared. So what we're going to do is take care of that 1 half first because we're multiplying the 1.5 times v squared. So we're going to do the opposite and divide both sides by that 1.5. 80 divided by 1.5 is 53 point three repeating and that equals v squared okay anytime you have a squared value you're always going to square root as the opposite operation and then that would give us our final velocity and i'll just round it off to 7.30 meters per second Okay, so we did a few different things there. We condensed the problem by combining the 1 half and the 3, and then we cancel out that 1.5 and then square um, rooted that 53.3 to finish off our answer. So after you do a little bit of condensing or cleaning up of the problem, a lot of the problems really aren't that many steps. It's normally like maybe one to three steps in a lot of formulas. Okay, now oftentimes people are comfortable using numbers because then they know exactly what they're getting. Um, but a lot of advanced physics involves moving variables around with no numerical values. So we have a bunch of values here. Again, doesn't matter what they are, but this is rotated, um, rotated. This is related to rotation, rotational kinematics. And we're going to solve for the alpha over here. So what we do is use a couple methods we used before, which are we're going to combine the 2 and this delta theta. So we're going to have 2 times delta theta. And then we're just going to slide our alpha at the end over here. Okay. And then we can go ahead and cancel out this first because we're adding it to this entire section over here. So we can just subtract the omega naught squared from both sides. Okay. That would leave us with omega final squared minus omega naught squared equals 2 times delta theta times alpha. Okay, again, we just kind of switch the order a bit. And since we're multiplying both of these by alpha, then we can go ahead and divide both of them together and drop them into the denominator over here. And then we have our answer for our alpha. Okay, we're using the same sorts of skills and moving stuff around and doing the opposite operations. But again, some people feel a little bit more uncomfortable moving variables around because they're a little bit more accustomed to those numerical solutions. Okay, now for our last one, we have a gravity formula where FG equals big G times this fraction M1 times M2 over R squared. And we're going to look for M2. Now, whether you have the G in the numerator or in front of the entire quantity, the G basically acts like it's in the numerator either way. It's the same thing mathematically. So what we can do is just basically pretend like the G is just in the denominator, or excuse me, the numerator. All right, so first thing we're going to do 
is we have all of these things right next to the M2. So we're going to leave those there first, but we're going to get rid of the R squared first. So we're dividing all of this by R squared. So we're going to multiply everything by R squared. That would leave us with FG times R squared equals G M1 times M2. Okay, if we could, then we would typically take the G and the M1, multiply those and get one single numerical value. Since we don't have those, we can just clump those together and divide both sides by G times M1. Okay, and then that would give us our M2. So to sum things up, what you want to do is you definitely want to clean up the look of the problems first, try to condense some things if you can. Remember the order in which you multiply things isn't significant, so you can kind of scoot stuff around if you need to. From there, you're going to go ahead and cancel things one thing at a time by doing the opposite operation until your variable is isolated. And then once it's isolated, then you have your solution. So I hope that was helpful in helping you work through six different formulas to review some algebra skills and strategies. Thank you for watching and listening.